Welcome to Practical Numerical Methods with Python and our first screencast where we cover a little bit of that theory to go along with the practical part that you're enjoying with the IPython notebooks. In this first screencast, we're going to discuss Euler's method. Euler's method is a first order method and in lesson two of the course module on the fugoid model of glider flight, we introduced Euler's method. We started with a definition of a derivative from your calculus class. If you recall the definition of a derivative, where u is a function of t, u prime of t, we use the prime to denote the derivative, is equal to the limit when delta t goes to zero of the function u at t plus delta t minus u at t divided by delta t. Assuming that delta t is already very, very small, we approximated the derivative by dropping the limit. And so then we can write that u at t plus delta t is approximately equal to u at t plus u prime of t times delta t. When we have an initial value problem consisting of the differential equation u prime of t is equal to f of u and the initial value u at t equals to 0 equals u0, then we can use the approximation to step from an initial value 0 to delta t to 2 delta t and so on and so forth until n delta t building a table of values from our initial value u0 to u1, u2, and so on until un. And this is what we call the numerical solution. A table of values of t and u of t obtained from applying the Euler formula over and over again. But what error do we make in this approximation? Let's use the index n to indicate a time value tn equal to n steps in time. Euler's method is written un plus 1 is equal to un plus delta t times f of un. To analyze the error of the approximation, we use a Taylor series at tn plus 1 about the solution at tn. Are you ready? Let's write the Taylor series. The Taylor series at time tn plus 1 about the solution at tn. It's going to be un plus 1 equals un plus delta t times u prime n. And remember, we're calling un as u at n delta t. Okay. But we have higher order terms. We have also delta t squared over 2 factorial u double prime at n plus delta t cube 
over 3 factorial u triple prime at n plus more terms and so on and so forth. And you can see that already these terms right here are exactly equal to our Euler's formula. But the Taylor series has these other terms over here, right? So to see the error in the approximation of the derivative by what we call a finite difference, we're going to isolate u prime n on the left hand side by dividing over by delta t, and I forgot a t here, dividing over by delta t the whole equation, then subtracting un and isolating this guy over here. Let's do that. I'm going to get u prime of n, which is basically equal to the derivative of u with respect to time at the time step n, is equal to un plus 1 minus un over delta t. This is, comes from un plus 1 here on the left hand side. I subtract un and all of that is divided by delta t. And then I have all these other terms that I uh, have moved over to the other side. So now they have a negative sign. And also I've divided over by delta t. So I have just one delta t here, delta t over 2, u double prime n. This other term I've divided over by delta t. So I only have delta t squared over 6 here, and other terms, let's be consistent with our sign, other terms over here, up to infinity really. So you can see that in the Euler approximation, we really only keep these terms right here. This is our Euler formula, the Euler method approximation of the first order derivative, and all of these terms are neglected. These neglected terms in Euler's method are called the truncation error. Well, you can already see that this is small if delta t is small. And the more you multiply by delta t, those terms get smaller and smaller. Delta t is, of course, smaller than 1. And in fact, delta t tends to 0. So all of these terms converge to 0, we say. The approximation converges to the exact derivative as delta t tends to zero. The truncation error in this case, as you can see, is proportional to delta t. And so we say that the truncation error in Euler's method is of order delta t. Or we use this called big O notation to say it's order delta t. We sometimes write it this way. We say u prime of n is equal to un plus 1 minus un over delta t. plus some terms of order delta t. And we talk about the order of the method by looking at the exponent of the term inside here, big O notation. In this case, this exponent is just 1. And we say that this is a first order method because the exponent of that truncation error is of first order. There you go. Euler's method is a first order method. Let's think about this for a moment using a picture. We're looking for u as a function of t and u of t is represented by some curve that we can plot u as a function of t and in this plot the derivative is always going to be the slope of the tangent. 
at any point. So your prime is the slope of the tangent to the curve. When we use Euler's method, we are approximating the slope by a line passing through two nearby points. So if I choose this point is T1, well, let's call it Tn, and the next point right here, let's do it right here, is Tn plus 1, then the line joining these two points might be slightly different than the exact tangent at Tn. And you can see that, of course, that difference is going to become smaller and smaller as the difference between Tn and Tn plus 1 gets smaller and smaller. That's delta T. The change in U between T and Tn plus 1 is un plus 1 minus un equals the integral between tn and tn plus 1 of u prime dt. This is just a statement of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Now graphically we can see this from a plot of u prime now. So let's plot u prime. Suppose that u, pl u prime has some shape like this. Something like that. And suppose now that we are going to obtain the change in ut between tn and tn plus 1. This is u prime of t now, the derivative, a curve of the derivative of u. Euler's method is actually going to, if you remember the Euler's method equation, it's going to give you that the difference between un plus 1 and un is delta t times well, f of, f of n is, is u prime. u prime is f, right? f of u, and t that is implicit in u. So Euler's method really gives you this shaded area, whereas the real integral is includes this triangular part over here. So this part here is the error that was made in the approximation. The shaded area corresponds to Euler's formula. U prime n times Tn plus 1 minus Tn, which is delta T. The area under the curve that is above the shaded re rectangle then is the error of the approximation. You can now graphically see that the error will depend on the slope of u prime or u double prime, the curvature. This graphical approximation also tells us a lot of other things. You can see how if I were to increase the time step, Let's do a plot again that represents u prime. This shaded area represents Euler's method. And suppose that I were to reduce delta t by half. So I make it smaller and obviously I'm now going to step from Tn to this point on T and I'm going to obtain this shaded area. So you can see now that the error is going to get smaller. 
only these two parts now, this triangle here or triangular area and this triangular area here are our error for delta t squared, delta t half. So the error will get smaller as we refine the mesh. That's one other insight we get. But the graphical interpretation also gives some ideas for getting a better approximation. If we could know or estimate an intermediate point in the curve of u prime, so here's again u prime, and here's tn, and let's exaggerate our plot now so that I can draw it tn plus 1. and our Euler formula is going to give me that rectangular area there. If I could estimate somehow an intermediate point between Tn and Tn plus 1, where this distance is delta t half, this one is delta t half, without actually refining the mesh by half, we want to find some estimate of the midpoint, for example. So how could we estimate u at the midpoint? Well, using our Euler's formula, we can say that u at n plus 1 half is equal to un plus f of un, that's u prime, of course, times delta t half. So we're using Euler's formula to advance only to delta t half and get an estimate of the value of the solution at un plus 1. Now we can use that known function f to obtain f of un plus 1 half and the shadowed area that I can draw, I'm going to draw here, this shadowed area, what is this shadowed area here? This shadowed area is really f at un plus 1 half times delta t. The distance over here is delta t. Right, so no, I know the function f from my, ordina from my ordinary differential equation, so I can use that now. I've found an estimate of, of, estimate of un plus 1, and I can use my known function f to say that un plus 1 now is equal to un plus delta t times f of u at n plus 1 half. So now the error is actually going to be proportional to the curvature of the curve of u prime, that is u triple prime. But nevertheless, what you can see here is that we've improved the approximation by estimating the midpoint, applying our known function from the differential equation at that midpoint, and using Euler's formula twice. And this was the first screencast on Euler's method. Euler's method is a first order method. Our theory screencast for practical numerical methods with Python.